Hello, hello. How are you everyone? Welcome, good morning. There's a stream where we do the recap of the TT series round <coughs> 8. Hello, Pounce and me. I, I have trouble. Is it Pounce? Am I pronouncing it correctly? It's French. If there is a letter in there, if there isn't a letter there, it means you should pronounce it. This is the rule of French. <laughs> Hello, yellow, six quickly. Shaggy explained. Welcome, welcome. Ginger noise. <laughs> no, do you pronounce S? I don't know. I don't know. I will. I shall, I shall ask my husband later. <laughs> Family friendly stream, yeah. Uh, who knows? Maybe we're swearing in languages that we didn't know existed by using normal English words. Jen is pushing me toward gathering more money, but I think people's participation in the tournament is also important. If we were to force people to pay, part pay participation fee, it would kind of break the idea of the tournament. I'm not really for it. Unless we have a separate tournament which have money prizes and then your pat patreon uh, like your patreon you can join type of a deal then maybe but not for the tt series tt series i think as of it as an open tournament for all the amateurs that they, they can join type of deal for free in case you were following the discord discussion yeah <clears throat> all right so we shall be jumping in. The first syllable is legitimately pronounced like poo, okay? I think the second is like you're trying to say ace in a really posh accent. I have no idea what's a posh accent. A vase, vase, ace, okay? I don't think it's how it's pronounced, but I don't know. I I, I won't be trying. <laughs> or technically. Like a fish? Was? Okay. Was in Polish means a... Uh, uh, was... What looks... Amphibian. The error that I cannot type, but... Amphibian. It's kind of funny. Was. Okay. If that's the correct pronunciation. Hypothetically, how much money do you need to raise if you had a generous donor? Well, as seen on this webpage, um, every every TD series, uh, like the teaching game, costs this much, really, around. But, oh, I didn't change my name. Um, There's no buts, it's just how much it costs. Yeah, the tournament. I mean, yeah, certificates we send uh, when people pay technically. I mean, it's not a lot of money to send certificate, actually. I mean, if you send certificate to everyone at once, which is like 12 people, then it's gonna be around $100, but because we ask them to pay for the shipping cost if they want, then we don't lose money on that. But basically this is the Nekomado price of four games, uh, one and a half hour. <clears throat> TTQ didn't cost us a lot, like TTQ didn't cost me anything apart from time to schedule the game and doing the videos. That's a lot of nerves of sending emails in Japanese, but we need to rethink the TTQ format as we 
like this season we had how many people joining? Uh, four. So like, is this what we wanna do? Also, uh, like three out of those four people are joining other tournaments. So technically we did achieve the goal that we had, which is to encourage females to play. Did I say four? We have Lily, which is five. To encourage them into playing Shogi, so they join the actual tournament. So instead, we could be rewarding the highest um, rated female player or something like this, I was thinking. I don't know how you guys feel about this. Also, it would be less work for me to manage five tournaments instead of four. Opposite. Four tournaments instead of five, yeah? Um... But the minus will be we'll have probably one less or two less lady pro teaching because we would give it only to the queen, right? Which could also make it more prestigious. Um, we all retire at the same time. Uh, so the way it works... <clears throat> Hi, Melkor. By the way, Meijin is going today. In case you missed it, it's very exciting. Um, here also has coronavirus apparently. So the way it works, every April first they announce this stuff. This they announce on Monday because it was weekend. We have four four dance which is three regular Shorekai people plus one that came from the examination. Both of name Koyama. <laughs> it's funny. Um, and then... They announced yeah, advancement and then retirement, right? So this is retirement. And this is like people on break. And those people have been break like for years. Those two lady pro has been like more than 10 years on a break, basically. I don't know how is this possible to have the break infinitely like this, but. You found Katagami Sensei blog post uh, rather moving. Why is that? Um, so we have those people retiring. We have Ishikawa, who's actually. Uh, I actually joined his study group. Then we have Kawakami uh, Ueno, who actually taught during the TT series, if you guys remember. And we have Madoka and myself. And the way it works for Pro, which is different from Lady Pro, is, as you guys know, there is a Jinsen. Uh I don't think they get Salah. No, I don't think so. Free class, uh, but I cannot, you know, I don't know. There is free class in Jinsen. And once you fall there and you do not manage to get out of it for a certain amount of years, you're forced to retire. And they actually have to play all their remaining games before retiring, kind of. So this is what it means. Same with uh, Kawakami and Ueno. Now Madoka <coughs> is lay, uh, Kitao is uh, Lady Pro, which means a different set of rules applies. And she is retiring because of the rule of Lady Pro instead of Free Class. Lady Pro rule. And the Lady Pro rule is super confusing and it's going to change every year. It's going to change next year as well, or in two years actually. Um, <laughs> It's it's all like a voting manner, like it changes because people vote to change it and Renmei pushes us to change the rule because the number of lady players is raising. So we have to fight it by limiting. Anyway, so the way it works is every year or every half year, I think even, you get something called a black point. Um, if you're in, if your results were at the bottom of the general lady pro population. Yeah, so you have all the lady pro. If your, let's say, win rate is the lowest or within eight lowest, 10 lowest people, depending on how many pro there is a different number, how many in total there are, there's a different number of lady pro that will get the point, you get the black point. 
Um, and then that black point stays until you correct your score. I don't remember how exactly, but it, they can get erased, yeah? But if you do not correct your score, you will naturally get more and more and more and more, more black points, right? And eventually, when you get enough of them, I'm not sure if it was like three or like four or like five, maybe three. I don't remember even. I didn't care. Um, because once you play well, you don't have to care, basically. Once you get enough of them, you're actually forced to retire. So that's what happened in Madoka's case. She was um, forced to retire. Those streams are great reason to get out of bed. Welcome, welcome. <laughs> Good morning. Uh, because there is exactly one candidate for open. <laughs> is there? I, I didn't read carefully enough, I guess. In my case, it was because I applied to retire, basically. I wasn't forced to retire. I just decided I won't be coming back to Japan. I won't be... Uh, it's, unlike, it's very unlikely for me to come back, so why not just announce it? Well, I won't be coming back. And so I uh, applied for it in the beginning. I don't remember if last beginning of this year, maybe. And so it became uh, true on March 31st. <laughs> That's the date I applied for. All right, let's check that post. Um, I know you all came here for Shaggy, but we we're talking about boring stuff. Sorry for that. Um, trying to find it. You mean this post? Or there was like, I think there were two of them. No, this is the number two. Okay. You would be so sad if you had to retire because you're not doing well. So as a pro, like a May pro, you need 10 years or something to retire. Like it's not a sudden thing. For male pro. Seven positions. Well, <laughs> they can always say he shouldn't be there. <clears throat> um, for lady pro, it's worse, basically. And then there's this discussion which system is better and so on, but I don't even care about thinking about this at this point. Haha. <laughs> the beauty of retiring. Hello, fine gentlemen. Uh, so this is like a rough Google translation. I'm not sure if it's gonna... So basically, yeah, I was taking a break a while after marriage. Decided not to go to Japan. She still talks with me on Zoom. He said, yeah, because she cared. So this is your translation. Uh, English to English. Uh, Japanese. Uh, basically, it's that you still are Lady Pro, even if you retire. So that's a thing, guys. Uh, I'm not sure if you realize. Um, there is two types of things you can do. Um, one which is retire. <clears throat> Retirement, intai. And there's also something called inkai. Uh, basically, it means to leave the organization, yeah? So it's different from retirement. And you may have heard words like Moto Lady Pro, like uh, X Lady Pro. So that's the difference. Uh, you used to be Lady Pro, you left the organization, so you're not anymore. Versus uh, you just retired. And even if you retire, you're still a pro. 
it's kind of weird, but that's how it works. You're pro for life. Hello, click. <clears throat> Um, not her native language. She has the intention to continue her activities, specifically teaching in Europe. She writes article. Well, basically, she's trying to get more people to like come to Japan and become pro. I think. Kuroni Naruyana. Yeah, I I wish there is more people who uh, attempt to become pro at Shogi. Um, and therefore, we are making this community to raise the level of Chuggy in Europe and to help you guys get stronger and stronger and stronger, eventually resulting in a pro of new sorts, right? <clears throat> he, of course, uh, would like to support this type of person, Katagami-sensei said, in the future. If such a person appears, he's ready to... Uh, support. And there was no special treatment. And so on. And he thinks I did my best in the 10 years since we met. Thank you everyone for uh, supporting. And then he talks about becoming one of the members of the <clears throat> Ren Megan, right? About Habu, about Sato resigning and other stuff. Um, yeah, he says the number of people candidating is the same as number of seats. Yeah, it's the trust vote, yeah, you said, yeah. As we know, yeah, last time it, it, it was a little bit weird situation for Katagami Sensei, but yeah. It's like Mafia once you're in your for life, yeah. I mean, you can get out of it, as I said, the Inkai. Uh, what would be the reason for one or the another? Uh, the Inkai, um, if you want to be part of Renmei or not, <laughs> basically. Like, do you want to still belong to the organization? Like, you can still work as a pro while not being professionally active, kind of. Professionally by meaning tournaments. Um, so, like, you have Horiguchi Sensei, who's not playing games, but he still teaches at schools, for example. You have... Um, I forgot her name. I forgot half of the lady pro names, like, sitting outside Japan. There is a lady pro that's not active, but she still works, used to work for years in the lady pro government, for example, counting money, um, stuff like that. So I can still work, but you cannot play games. That's the difference. Uh, there's me to school in situ that is teaching Shogi in official curriculum. Nice, congrats. Wow. Also, by the way, Jen, I found your <laughs> answer on Discord, GPT-like. I, I wanted to laugh a little bit if you came here. You said, <clears throat> because I've been using GPT recently, as you know. Uh, One thing people recommend is have an emergency pregnancy bag ready with clothes, towels, and toiletries when you're expecting, so you can just grab them. It sounded like a computer-generated response to me. <laughs> Uh, I I also find it very cute that you're caring this much, but don't worry. We we got we spend at least two days on a course being explained when to start panicking. I mean, you never should panic, but like what to do step after step. We read a bunch of books too. I think we're vaguely prepared, and this is why I'm also taking a break from streaming after next week, uh, after next Thursday. Just to not allow a situation like this to occur. <laughs> uh. If Carlson started counting for money, maybe. Technically, I get paid by organizing TT series. I never mentioned it, but 
Technically, this is considered by Lady Spross as a promotional activity, especially TTQ. And they decided to reimburse me. Like, acknowledge that fact by paying me a little bit um, as a promotional activity. <clears throat> They're also fu funding all the Lady Pro, yeah? So that's, that's huge from that. <laughs> Maybe we would have a lot of more overseas check funding. So that's another that's a discussion for another thing. Like um it's not like there is Nihon Renmei, which is Nihon Renmei, and there is the Lady Pro assembly, which are two different things. So yeah. <clears throat> Let me get some more water. My throat is weird today. Okay. <clears> TTK <throat> is not only for men. There's really in there. Technically speaking. <sighs> Do we have anything else to talk about before the recap? I think the discussion that we have on Discord about how to promote Shoggy and so on is important. But unlike Jen, I mean, I don't know when Jen started playing Shoggy, but I've been playing Shoggy for depression hits 14 years, 15 years, 16 almost, half of my life, literally. And <clears throat> I've been doing uh promotional activities since then so i know the mindset of oh i know exactly what to do to promote this game like this many things should be happening this should be done like i i, I had that mindset when i was a kid oh we should do the polish association thanks to that truck is gonna boom and everything but turns out it didn't so <clears throat> I know that mindset and I personally, yeah, I, I don't think it's a wrong mindset, but personally I'm tired of it. I feel like if we're talking about doing stuff, we should be doing it. It's going to be faster than just theorizing about what would be, should be. <clears throat> like if, if you think about it, Hidechi made a triggered one lady to become a professional player just by making tournament on 81 Dojo and allowing her to meet with Madoka, right? If you think about it, small thing like this triggered an avalanche of events that led us to today. And because he did the tournament, yeah, he didn't talk about this, oh, we're gonna have Lady Pro, blah, blah, blah. No, he did something that led to it, yeah. Which was lucky and unusual, like you cannot predict something like this happening, but I think you can create an environment where it can be more likely than not that it's going to repeat, yeah? So in order to have more people playing Shogi and playing Shogi at better level, we need teachers, is my feeling. We need competition, which is a tournament. We need materials, which are the books. So that's my next step to like create content on YouTube or, or the book. Um, and that's how my brain works, yeah? How my philosophy works at this point. Of course, having local shaggy clubs is great. In my case, I'm in Switzerland, so I don't feel comfortable doing anything here. Being in Malaysia, it's a great thing to do. If I would be in Poland, I would probably do that. Um, and also I have this online community, which I cannot just leave. So <laughs> I have different set of responsibilities, I believe. I'm kind 
kind of half regretting we stopped the international magazine. Maybe we could revive it one day. It was a good idea and people got excited. Just like better. I have to learn how to do stuff better. Making your efforts sustainable, laying the foundation. We need a strong foundation in order to build to the top. Exactly. How to become pro 101. Mm. Now the second problem is you can tell people what to do, but they're not necessarily going to do it. Anyway. <clears throat> so, um, turning to King actually ended because it had eight rounds only. And as you can proudly see, we will have a uh, light to die versus Eon in title matches. Did you guys decide on the title match? You were supposed to ping me, right? You didn't yet, I think. Wait, you mean one o'clock in the night? <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, okay, okay, the match is not decided yet, but we're trying to set it up in April, basically, so that I can stream it. I mean, at worst, I'm going to ask somebody else to stream it, I guess, right? Wait, I just realized I made it up to C tier on Time Zombies tier list as a Sergi streamer. I can officially retire happy, said Blue. Interesting. Uh, not decided it. All right. Anyway, so the way it works, there will be two matches. If it's going to be a draw, they're going to be game free. So it's up to two wins. Um, the first game is random. The second game is reverse colors. The third game is Rigoma again. Uh, so why did it happen? Well, we have those results over here. Those two tables say the same thing, basically. Um, everyone played versus everyone. In a really bit confusing manner, because the number of players playing each round became less and less. Sorry about that. My mistake. Um, but the result is correct. The result is fair. Everyone played everyone. And as you can see, Player number two, player number one. This is number of wins. They have six wins, which means they clearly deserve to play each other. Yeah. There is no draw. Like, I mean, there's a draw between them, but it's another story. There is no draw, no need of tiebreaker because those are the two best players. Eh, Lincoln, <laughs> you're the biggest. Loser of this tournament, I believe. Like you had so many unfortunate events happening. We had the misclick, we had the disconnection. You had one fortunate event, which was mistaking the time zone by your opponent. So I guess it levels up. But I was really sure you're gonna be the challenger this 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 year because you had this tempo from the beginning and just won all those games, and then crazy stuff happened. <laughs> Uh, two ellipses. I'm interested in the idea of making shaggy content, but I'm not sure how I would even go about making any. Uh, since I'm not very good still, definitely want but the puff inside there. Well, you can start with your game commentary. You can say what I'd learned this game or like what I think you sh as a beginner should do. Uh, you can address people who are around or lower than your level, like super beginners. You can start with that. You can just tell them what you know. You don't have to pretend you're smarter than you are. There's always next time. Okay, that's a good, that's a good mentality to have indeed. In pro world, it would be, I, I said it on the other stream, but in pro world, it would be really hard because there might be not the next time, yeah? Like, you get to challenge the mage in only once in your life, perhaps. Anyway, I wanted to see those games. 
so <clears throat> a weird thing happened in 10 marches game but that's for after and uh, melkor i didn't see your game actually let's see oh, i have to log in so that we have the correct pieces on give me a sec Uh, 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 too much clicking. What do you mean rehash the video? What does it mean rehash a video? If I lose, I don't know when my chance next chance will come. So in that sense, I felt like I had to win a quad for our Shima game after he won his promotion. Yeah, it's harder the classes. Okay, Melkor, why is it only in Japanese? It's weird. Anyway. Oh, because it's the link from... Yeah, okay. Light is playing with Japanese interface. That's what's happening. Um, mm -hmm. Ooh, this is crazy. What just happened? So we have this, this opening. And we have this greedy, greedy side pound picking here. And then light is counterattacking with the knight. So by modern shogi, if you manage to activate the knight first, you should be better off. And then we have this. Here, if we take the knight, we lose the bishop, right? I mean the gold, technically. So it's unacceptable. He will try to block everything off because the rook is attacking the gold. Were we able to just move the king to the side? Or is it like pound drop is way too scary right now, leading to something like this? And we don't want to accept that. Maybe. And technically, we don't have to take that pawn. Take the gold takes. Um, I have trouble judging static group positions. Engine says actor K protects actor. K protects gold. Rook just sacrifice for the gold. Oh, like this. And you're worse. <laughs> but this is hard to win, isn't it? How do you win that? <laughs> Let's go there. Like, what's the next move? What's the plan? <laughs> I don't see. Gold drop seven six. I don't know. But if we take the knight, so you're saying this rook's gonna be targeted, and then this gold's gonna be targeted. Engine is crazy. Okay, I guess. And check it with engine. It's also for me learning. Uh, so you say that if I save this, the engine will be ready. No, okay, you didn't analyze it. We can check it in a moment. Anyway, um, so generally speaking, uh, you end up in this situation where he's the one attacking. And if that attack succeeds minimally, you're worse off because you're one side attacked. I think that would be the strategy because you cannot defend everything. You didn't analyze it. Okay, that's weird. Then. But looking at the diagram here, it isn't so obvious around here. It's just minus 100. Um, if we got this variation, right, I'm gonna break the computer if I analyze during the analysis. <laughs> no, okay, gold drop, pound drop, takes, 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 takes the gold, takes, takes, pound drop, but it's almost equal, so it's not losing, it was an option, yeah.
in in high level shogi it's also the question of which position do you feel more confident in personally oh by the way yellow this is yellow eon uh, weren't you saying something about if the knight jumps you have to move the king weren't you explaining that to me the other day guess that's the reason why it works the king is not here so the knight jump works ah uh, but it was bishop exchange never mind i was wondering if the same rule will apply here because it seems like if the king was here before or here it might have been different okay yeah yeah i remember that five seven square here if the king was here it was protecting the gold so this attack wouldn't be as severe yeah, anyway. Um, so if you're confident, yeah? Here, it's like you dropped everything. You won't have a counter attack, right? And then they have this move. Which is really hard. But you have this. Okay, I mean, that, that looks good. But then the bishop is inactive. Rook exchange happens. Okay. Um... I wonder if you should, should try to sacrifice this rook <laughs> for one more move. Sacrifice, they take, you take, at least you break their position a little bit more. You should have just taken the rook when? Oh, here? Then they have this, right? Or this? Hmm. This is your last pawn, so this is particularly painful, right? If you drop the bishop first, does it change your situation? A little bit? Yes, you would lose both. Tom, 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 run. King runs. Take the rook, take the rook. The bishop is stuck in a weird square anyway, but then you take the knight. Rook drop. This line is open, but you cannot use it. You have a knight though. Hmm. Um. But we're fighting, I like that, but we don't have no pawn, okay. Gold move, okay. Yeah, we have to we have to keep protection, okay, yeah. Oh, that looks awful, yeah. Okay. They just eat the pieces, so like we center. I like the symmetry here. And the horse is gone, and once the horse is gone, the king is pretty unsafe. But yeah, you, you look to be attacking. Not clear yet. Ooh, this, this, this is scary, isn't it? Like this king looks a little bit surrounded right now, but I guess he, he said it's fine. Okay, you blocked your own rook. Trying to defend, but in the end, yeah. So here it seems like Pound drop was a mistake in it, and pound push was a little bit better. And allowing them to jump the knight is a little bit disadvantageous. So here, most likely, going back is safe. It's a very difficult, difficult strategical thing, basically. 
<laughs> good try though, yeah. Good game. All right. Uh, so speaking of um, Del Marches game, <laughs> uh, Warfry Rook, and this is like an opening that Del March has a lot of confidence in because you know he played it for years. He knows it really well. This is like basic stuff. You sacrifice the rook pawn before attacking. Then the pawn drop happens here. To make a decision, do you jump in or do you fall back? Jumping in is recommended. Uh, here you have the option to take or to take. Here we chose to take the silver. The king gets it to be distracted, but... Um, here we're trying to defend against bishop drop. So, bish yeah, bishop fork. So first before running, we do that. And we have this famous knight jump, knight drop, famous, sorry, king move. It's all just a key kind. Yeah, the knight. Uh, Telmarch has all the generals in the defense, but Krivin has active knight. And the rook goes here. Knight escapes, rook exchange is possible. And both sides sabaki. Currently, um, we're like silver down, but we have the nice knight right in front of the king, so it technically, I think it's fightable. It's just a matter of middle game now. So, let's see what happened after. Double attack on the go. This is particularly painful because the knight drop will be now um, undefendable so we, got, we end up losing the guard for the knight here Telmarch is attack uh, Krivin is attacking severely because he can take this gold rendering all those useless this is a beautiful thing to do yeah you see this bishop draw very nice decision Melkor says you would prefer to defend one more move this is also fair And here, um, a miscalculation happened, I think, according to what I talked to there much around here. Um, he thought he had a tsume over here. And turns out he didn't. <laughs> he didn't, but he still could have won using Hishi, basically. Um, by taking this pawn at some point, like chasing this king escape route, something like this. But the most funny thing, even though it wasn't Atsume, it ended up being Atsume. So there was a sacrifice of the dragon, followed by knight drop, followed by gold sacrifice, followed by bishop. Atsume is an illusion. And here, Gold drop, king takes, runs. If the king runs to here, there is the horse. He has to go back. And we take. The idea is we drop the silver at the head of the king and we win, right? There is one problem with this situation. <laughs> this is the position on Cleveland resigned, by the way. There is a problem with this situation. <laughs> Knight <laughs> actually protects the square. <laughs> and it's not that soon. Uh, <laughs> when the game ended, I heard so much laugh and I'm like, what happened? He explained to me the whole situation. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's that's the tiny drama that occurred in the game, the very last game. So yeah, the, the, the correct answer was around here, I think. Or just, just simply, I don't remember. Drop the knight. And then do this. This uh, effectively prevents the knight drop here, which would capture that king while threatening this king checkmate. 
So this was winning anyway. It was more like this cringy laugh of I, I cannot believe this happened <laughs> type of idea. JK only won the top part. Fun fact. We had J Hart K on our wedding cake. And every time <laughs> we laugh because it sounds like JK joke, you know, like JK. <laughs> uh, anyway. It was the best cake I ever ate in my life, by the way. So, did you care? Um, that concludes it, basically. Yeah, very exciting title match coming up. Uh, good luck, Eon, good luck, Light. We're gonna see who's gonna be the new king. Morning, Gohenro. You had only one night, whoops. Turn it to Masters. All right, let's see, let's see what happened last round. We had some exciting game, which was... Um, did we have exciting games? We had to do the Vesna voice and something happened here. I need to see. We have Rina fighting back and Rida fighting. Yeah, Rida was top player currently. So that game is very important. Snowdrop is one step before. So in order to contest the first place, um, he had to win. He beat seven, he would have been nine. But then the next round will decide who's going to be the true winner winner. Yeah. Uh, Rina is also behind, Navoyska behind, six, six points. So everything close by, we don't know what's going to happen yet. But uh, Rida is on the best way to become the winner here. Is it with round to spare? Like if we lose, it's gonna be eight still, and this player is gonna be at eight. So this is not decided yet. I think. Is it? Oh, it is decided already. Because this is gonna be max seven. Oh well, I, I guess that means Rida won, right? Already. Even if you lose, this is gonna be eight and this is gonna be seven. Yeah, legend. Legend indeed. No need to watch the games then. <laughs> no joking, we're gonna watch it. We're gonna see Dude Navoiska with Ureshina versus Swingiru. We didn't cover that yet on the YouTube channel. This is crazy. This pound push, you're lunatic. If I, if I was playing this side and I saw this pound push, I would murder you. <laughs> Instantly my predatory shaggy instinct would just kick in. Reshinotic, yeah. And just like murder. Oh, yeah, yeah. But sure. You just gave a pawn to your opponent, but it's a nice position. This, this move also very cocky, like, I see you have two pieces looking here, I shall leave the defenses. Oh yeah, yeah, and now they have super vanguard pawn. So that alone it just gave a lot of advantage to the swing rook. Yeah, yeah, it's, fun. it's a fun move, but I'm saying what, what kind of instinct it would awaken in me, seeing that. I uh, I want to imagine what would happen if I stayed in TTM. I would feel so bad that I couldn't win TTM. I mean, your decision was to challenge yourself, and I think it's good. Um, you actually had, what, three wins? So it's technically a good result for TTK. So yeah, and, you know, by playing those games, you get the... Uh, so valuable experience. Good. Silver sacrifice. Yeah, that looks exciting. They can avoid it though, right? Okay, so now we defended everything. But yeah, enemy pieces are doing whatever they want. So 
Two for one, rook sacrifice. We just gave away a free silver here by doing that. Look at this beautiful fork. I said two for one. This is two for free. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, that's more Mifa style. I agree. Silver promotion for seven. I agree. Yeah, it's final. You should definitely join if you have uh, a time for that. So here already do this better. Now it's a matter of finishing it. Yeah. Ah, beautiful exchanging all the pieces. Knight activation. Beautiful pawn drop. Oh, dropping the king to the back rank. Okay, it ended up being a little bit sus. Sus position. So maybe... Maybe a different move was necessary, but... Like, I don't like this shape. Because the king runs here, we promote. But, okay, we resigned anyway. Mm, like... There was a better way to decide this game. Example being maybe like this. It's the same situation when we promote the rook, but we have the golds in hand. It's a little bit more convenient for us. And it's still treated in checkmate. Yeah, checkmate threat. The gold drop. We can see Kashiro's influence here. Nice. So. Uh, yeah, Navoiska had fun in this game, but a little bit backfired. Kambui versus Force Sensitive. This is the wrong shape to make generally against Swinging Rook. But depending what your idea is. Um, wrong shape because this is Gangi. Gangi is weak against Rook Drop. So, and this Rook will promote there, so it's kind of weird. So we just defend, bring the gold up. It's very stable though, like not easy to break through. And the king goes back to early center. This is very sus. <laughs> this is very sus. We just make a stronger castle. And technically this side is winning because of the strength of the castle. This side is going for like this wide play. But considering we are center, what are we gonna do with it, yeah? Try to Try to do stuff. Ooh, this is getting exciting. So you see, the problem is the king is very close to the center, so any lands promotion like this will feel very, very severe. Very, very close. So force sensitive thing can go a little bit crazy here because this is gonna activate the rook, so we're even happier. And now that we have rook in hand, I think we're pretty much unstoppable. Let's go there. Yeah, we have two pivotal pieces over here. Third one coming soon. Yeah. Uh, this could have been an alternative. I speed it up, but it didn't happen. Oh, beautiful. This this tactic here, guys. This is exactly what what we talked about pressure. Um, if we just take, sure, we take, there's nothing, but instead we, like, we don't have to hurry the lands, the dragon are not under attack, they have only knight in hand. This pawn push to, like, weaken their defenses even more. This is so decisive, this is so beautiful. If I had enough time, I would just make a short video about this position, basically. Maybe I should, actually, but, like, this is decisive, right? Very, very beautiful. If I were to choose one decision from this round, it would be that. Okay, and this is technically over as more and more pieces come close. This sacrifice is a little bit ambitious. <laughs> this, like, we could have slowed down. Um, <laughs> okay, but sure, it is decisive. Great decision, and we should drop decisive. Very forceful play, very. Uh, solid play from first sensitive. My instant husband should be instant. My husband's instant strategy should be more like the Hamet of the tournament. <laughs> yeah. Let's check on Rida.
Okay, so so far, the problem is our king is like half castled. And like we spend time picking up this pawn and then coming back, whatever. This way or this way, it's the same. Um, and like the, 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 the playstyle of Gerardo is to like allow this rook exchange, which kind of favors Rita, right? Rook pawn exchange. In the meantime, Rida activated the silver, activated the knight with tempo, exchanged the servers. Got a lance, which Gerardov tries to punish by the knight jump, but Rida fights with gold drop, a silver drop. And now, tactical fight continues. This is another fork. It's hard to say who's better. Oh, <laughs> what's going on here? So we lose the rook, but we got a gold. Hmm. I mean, clearly the king's safety is like, could have considered this, but this bishop is not useful as this horse. So the difference is going to be huge, perhaps. Even if we exchange, we lose tempo. We don't have a knight as well. If we had a knight, like anything here would be threatening, but we don't have that pleasure. Yeah, the rucksack was strong here. We took two pieces for one, right? On top of it, we activated both of those pieces over here. And on top of it, we gained the tempo. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Whoa. <laughs> what is this move? The bishop would have to go back, right? But if you look closely, there's only one square. And it would be immediately attacked by either, like, I don't know what is better, pound drop? Night drop? Like, it would be attacked. So, we have a sacrifice again. Night drop. Going for double attack here and here. This is counter attack for a night drop. Very interesting move for Gerardov. A solid play from Rita. Okay, final attack. Yeah, we're trying to get in. Wow. And promote a check. What is going on in this game? Wow, this is mate. We have a pound drop. If king runs, we have rook promotion. Wow. King runs. What happens if king run? I think that was more likely, right? Takes, takes. We still have a pawn, but the bishop protects knight. King... King runs was better, no? No mate. Agreed. Okay. Then we have this threat, which is powerful. We took, which made it more dangerous. Um, if you run here, this is a mate in free. If we take, we can take the drop. We have pawn and gold. Not sure how that's a mate. Drop the pawn. Like if we drop the gold, they just drop the gold and it's a mate. What is it pawn drop again? I guess this also leads to a mate, right? Um, if they take the pawn, it also leads to a mate. So this would be a mate. And he played this move in, let's see, this move, 2 minutes, 6, 2. This is 37 seconds, this is 4 seconds. And here he spent 1 minute 45, so quite fast. 
find this one. This took six minutes for Gerard to read. Uh, Rook sacrifice, of course, if we take it, it's a gold drop at the head. So run. Is this a mate? We have this lens here, right? Take, take, drop, take. <laughs> <clears throat> Google Hub is shouting at me that I should be streaming today. Oh, and this night comes in. <laughs> I think, I mean, Pandrop, I think it works to be covering this square, but it's already covered. Pandrop works too, right? Anyway, the king has to run here, and we have a beautiful checkmate. Crazy. Wow, another beautiful game today. That's rare to have two beautiful games like this. But hey, end of the tournament brings the best. So yeah, congratulations to Rita for getting this so well deserved. Yeah. Place. Yeah, I guess it was the last chance for Dudu to stop Rita here, yeah? Like, because... But now it's over. Five points, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So we had round eight TT series, uh, TT showdown. Um, currently it's close between Tutski and the Grigolade. So we're gonna check their both games. Next round they're playing against different people anyway. Um, depending on who wins. It might get a little bit messy. Because there's one point difference between. <laughs> probably, yeah. We have this unspoken rule that the winner should probably go onward. Ah, we, we covered this game on stream, actually. Last Sunday. I'm gonna just leave it. But basically, the Gringolade showed an amazing one-sided game here. Wanna check on Music Man? Normally, you wanna double protect this pawn with this silver, just in case the rook swipes in. But we have a different tactic here. Uh, so the rook, you know, is possible. Here it's less efficient because we have this gold protecting this square. So normally it's a fork. Here the fork doesn't exist. Thanks to this gold. So it's another way to like protect it. This silver is very unnatural looking as it goes toward the center. So we don't have Mino, we don't have Anaguma. We don't have uh, twin gold. Not sure which strategy Scamax is going for. It is definitely good to see good games. Um, so we have the castle, we have the bishop and the rook line open. Very strong approach. Scamax goes for center king, yeah? So this is kind of weird. This shape is weird because our generals are in this array. They were forced forward too. Uh, this silver is just sitting here. If it moves, the bishop can promote. So it's kind of stuck on this square. This bishop avoided this activity here by being here, and now we're trying to activate it, but Notice it weakens the king's head. And the rook is doing nothing. Next we surely will have a trouble defending this. The rook would have to come here and so on. And this gold looks useless, yeah? If we would like to use it in the castle, we would have to do something weird like this. I'm not sure how this bishop is gonna help us. Maybe long term, something like this, but this bishop is controlling us heavily.
I never saw Central King like this in Double Swinging Rook, but I wouldn't be surprised if it existed. There is no wrong side of the board, yellow, by the same definition of is there X in Y opening? There is no wrong side of the board. <laughs> yeah, so the rook comes here and now we relieved some pressure by getting tempo. Uh, now we're trying to pressure the silver, but we also weakening the king, so it's kind of weird. Weird, but makes sense in a way. Knight comes in here. We trap. We can trap the knight by redropping the pawn, actually. But we decide to move the rook here first. Maybe because if we drop the pawn. I have no idea why we move the rook first. I was thinking this move, but this allows the exchange here. Maybe that's what we want to avoid, like some crazy exchanges here. I don't know. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> okay, we drop it anyway. And here, perhaps this was just to be better. We finally attack the silver, the rook is free. And our bishop is active again. We just go back here. So this is quite a cool move. Just go back. We know we have slow pressure that we can utilize. Uh, we would like to activate our rook before going into fight. So it does make sense to like calm down. Go back. Notice that we have already silver knight advantage. Oh, I remember playing a move like this in Kenshukai. Oh, the idea being if we take the rook is trapped. Beautiful Tessuji from Skamax. Oh, yeah, he, music tried to do everything to avoid Rook being captured and ended up being captured. How beautiful is that? So we just lost the Rook. <laughs> and now we have a strong attack, but the horse is there. Oh, now Skamax is fighting back, but the Rook is about to be taken. I would like to escape it once. We, the king is very close, that's the problem. If the king was here, I would say Skamax might be better off. But yeah, also notice how this bishop is useless the whole game. Mm, okay, yeah, that's, it's, that's unfortunate. We cannot take this piece because it's a mate, right? So this is what Skamax realized. It's better to play a different move in this position in those cases. And checkmate. Hey, okay. Skamax did fought well. Yeah, 6Q versus 1Q. It was a great fight. There was some excitement there, but the strategical position was a little bit um, off. So the last round, we will have my student, Mizuti, playing the Gringolade. I'm looking forward to this game. Um, Mizuti was a winner last time, as you guys remember too, so... Fair play is supposed to happen. They say. Not too bad, not too bad. Uh, and we will have Sleeping Bird, yeah, against two skis. Also looking forward to that next week. Fighting. <coughs> yes, Mizuti uh, has private lessons with me, actually. I already explained it on another stream, but if anybody else is interested to pay a little bit of money for like our study per week or something, we can always arrange something. All right, you guys ready for our favorite TTJ tournament? <laughs> of course, we have our was game. Was, was it? And we could watch Gabes or Cos game. Ko will probably send it or if he didn't already. I was also curious about Dr. Lennon versus Hulk because Hulk left me with the impression that he's strong and here Dr. Lennon just destroyed him. So I was curious what happened. Yeah. I'm gonna take a look. Yeah, let's go. Well, Mifa, I told you, you can always send me a message you never did, so. Okay. 
in that sense. Yep. In case of Mizuti, he had he's like DG Shodan, so I'm concentrating on end game training. Um, for stronger players, I would need to change my approach, but I mean, it's a good teaching experience for me as well. <sighs> anyway, yeah, the problem is like I'm taking a break like this month, so I'm not sure if I'll have this much time, but always, always send me DM, we can discuss stuff, yeah. Always. I need to get over my fear of playing games as well, so eventually. <sighs> I've been I've been actually thinking of asking ChatGPT about some advice about that. Maybe it will come up with something smart as it did with the journal. <laughs> All right, um, Spouse, Let's see how he did against Mistia. Yeah, Aigakari or Yokofudori? Yokofudori. Okay. So this pawn drop it seems premature. Oh, <laughs> you took the pawn. I wouldn't mind going to the side in this position. It's like, oh, they just wasted their precious pawn and dropped it in a random square. Like, it's not going to benefit them to have the pawn here. Chat GPT therapist, yeah. I mean, I find it fun. Like, I'm sitting at home, nobody to talk to. Hello, ChatGPT. Hello, how can I help you? And it's like, oh, hi. Can I have a talk? I need some inspiration. He's like, okay, I shall give you some. It just, just like, sometimes it says one thing and I'm like, I have to think about this. I didn't talk much about this. It's like, just, I have a question in my mind. And then it gives me five points. I'm like, yeah, I know that. I know that. Wait, I never thought about this before. And then I spend my time thinking about that new thing. Uh, so it's quite helpful. So here I think going the side was better here they have the bishop draw, right? This is a trap. If the rook escapes, we will lose two pieces for one, right? And this is a winning pattern in your Yeah, like we don't need pawns at this point. We're thinking about peace activity, yeah? This is greedy, taking pawn. We don't need that pawn. We miss bishop takes. Oh, we miss bishop takes. Be <sighs> okay. This is unnatural. Very, very famous. <laughs> very famous. This is a. Uh, um, this is this position is literally what we would show to students at Horiguchi's class since his class as an example of game when you should resign. We explain to students. Oh, this is where you drop the gold. The king has nowhere to run. So this side is gonna say makemashita, this side is gonna say arigato gozaimashita, and then we put all, then we do the cancel and oh here you should have defended, like should have be careful here, maybe move the bishop here, ah I see, I see, and then we put all the pieces back to the bag together, like this is how we teach the kids, like literally the position like this. <laughs> You're screaming, sorry Melkor. I have been distracted by talking about ChatGPT. Yeah, so pounce this is good good lesson from Melkor Senpai. Yeah. Remember this shape. Yeah, if the rook has pressure on this gold, bishop exchange favors you. Yeah, rook goes back. Now they have this. We can counter it uh, with a pawn drop. The bishop doesn't work. I think because you have to take it with something. And again, similarly to what happened there, no matter which piece you take with, there is some disadvantage. Either they promote, they promote. Knight takes, I think the bishop drop may happen again and they're gonna break in again, but it's a little bit difficult. Mifa prefers to take the gold, I guess that's so, so fair. Um, so we have this happening, we're using all the pawns, they escaped, this is a little bit sketchy, but their bishop is useless, so perhaps this is good. And then we drop a crucial bishop, they're forced to drop the lands they just got, 
put more pressure, beautiful, they bring the king closer to the danger, and we simply break it through. Beautiful ending. Beautiful ending. Well done, Pwas. Bishop 1-5. There was Bishop 1-5, apparently. The endgame was really good. But according to Melkor, we have a fork here as well. On the king and the rook. The rook potentially can go back to avoid the fork. Um, we move the rook, they're gonna push the pawn. So, I mean, this is rook bishop exchange, right, Melkor? But technically, they wouldn't have a dragon over here, so it's potentially better. So, we learned two Tesujis for Yokudori today. Three, even. Take this bishop, sacrifice the rook in some positions, and um, if the king is in the center, it works. All right, let's check on Gabes. We have double swinging rook, the silver in the center attacking. This is an alternative way to defend the bishop instead of using heavy gold, creating a weakness on the rook and the gold. We move the bishop and it's protected by the knight. And as we know, the bishop exchange will actually activate the knight as well, so it's a pretty nice move to consider. Bishop exchange here, we actually deactivate the gold and knight won't do anything. Similar to what the opponent did. We have vanguard pawn, really nice. Oh, I like that. I like the bishop activation. Okay, we're trying to defend pound drop. Okay, how we continue attacking the center? We could consider... No, we don't have any drop. I mean, we're really crazy something like this exists, but we don't have the drop. Um, what else? What can we do? Bishop drop can be blocked by the pound push, which happens, so that's why I'm not convinced. Uh, they actually have trouble moving the silver next if we do nothing. We just, let's say, develop the knight or something, or this pound push. Maybe we're afraid of the rook coming here, putting the pressure. I mean, bishop looks so nice. <laughs> Instead of going here and promote, going here and promote. Perhaps looks more interesting. Yeah, here we lose material, but we got a token, so we don't lose material ultimate, ultimately. If they do anything else, we get a horse. We can always go here. Um, if we're crazy, we have some other promotions, but I don't think they're better. So this happens. We push from the king. Okay, this is crazy. <laughs> This is a crazy way to sacrifice. Now, if they have a knight, like this creates a huge weakness on our castle. So this is why it's bad. Pound drop also, like we move this pawn away, creates a weakness for the king ear to be exposed, right? But we're taking um, our time into, like we had this huge asset here, so they are distracted. They have to defend it. So this is why we have enough time to like do this stuff. Okay, they blocked our bishop. But we utilize this promoted pawn really well. I really like the way we're playing here. Okay, they're trying to block us. We got the horse for free. It's perfect. Yeah. Gabes is really doing a great job utilizing that um, vanguard pawn in this game really, really well. All the pieces are active. Really well done. Instead of bishop, I would go here to treat them on the king rather than treat them the rook. We're taking all the free pieces, perfect. Oh, we didn't take the rook. It's a free rook. Why do we change our plan now? Here we all we actually have a sume or almost sume, like almost because there's actually a bishop here. <laughs> so at least it's a hishi, or here we can set up a hishi. Um, it's winning.
Yes, I don't know why we concentrate on capturing the rook. We should concentrate on capturing the king, yeah? Because if we're not careful, they're going to have counters like that. Yeah, so Gabes, like some mistakes in the end game, like forgetting what's the objective of the game, which is to capture the king rather than just capture the pieces. But really good tactical reading overall. And finally, let's check on Hawk, Dr. Lemon. What is going on? Demon killer opening. And what is this move? What is going on? <laughs> okay. Okay, maybe this was a misclick. Maybe this was a misclick. Okay. Defending everything, sure. Beautiful minus shape. But currently, if we were to judge this position. We have this token, and that token wins the game. <laughs> uh, we could have blocked the rook and taken it off the board. We didn't. So now the bishop is going to be under pressure. Okay, they still do it. Okay. We could have moved the rook away to avoid it being blocked, maybe. Now it's not clear because Hulk's pieces are all like looking toward those direction. And this rook is blocked. We still have bishop and knight in hand, which gives us mm, no advantage, actually. The advantage of having those pieces in hand, perhaps. And let's see how it goes. This is hard to see who's going to win. Taking this. And then dropping the pawn would actually like capture this gold. Um, going back, it's like we just came back, right? The positions, it's kind of weird. Okay, yeah. So here I would have taken this first and then dropped the pawn. It's crazy attack, which is going to backfire. And okay, we walked under our check. Yep, TTJ, <laughs> magic. Thank you, Malcor. Dr. Lemon invited a new of a ink, yeah. Well, interesting game, interesting. So who's winning in TTJ? We have very close top, actually. We have two people with seven points and two people with six points. So everything will be decided. Uh, we have Paz versus Dr. Lemon. So here, one of them is going to fall to lower points. Mistia, Tulip, Safit, Koaltas. Yeah, those are tough pairings. So. We're gonna see next week. Ultimately, who's going to win? You were not satisfied by this game because you saw Bishop takes 2 2 only after I played my move, but I'm satisfied in my game that I play against Dr. Lennon this morning. Alright, gotcha. I'm gonna be excited about this next week then, plus. Um Yeah, Bishop 2 2, important to know as a. Not a group player, definitely. Your senpai is shouting, yeah, why did you take the bishop type of important? He won that game, though. Yellow, I don't know why they say lost. Or do you mean the next game and you just spoiled it? <laughs> Did you just spoil me the result of the game, Yellow? <laughs> uh, I don't understand because you sound too happy to have just lost a tournament decided game. Oh, that's what you mean. Like, he sounds too happy to lose that game. Gotcha. But that also kind of spoils the result. So let's, let's not go that way. I don't know. No, no, we don't know. We, we don't reveal he won or lost. We don't reveal. Yeah, yeah. We don't reveal that. So, 
that's all of the games for the um the things shall we check on Meiji? <laughs> um I have it on my phone. I'm gonna check it there. So, last time I saw it was pound drop nine six, then the rook came. Started counter attacking. Very difficult, you know? Very difficult, Majin. The game continues. Resumes in five minutes, I see. Okay, thank you, Mifa. Do you enjoy Chushagi? No. <laughs> it doesn't have drops in it. Drops are my favorite part of Shaggy. Rule Math. Congress of the Mathematical Research Society. What is that? Uh, it's like an actual math people tournament. That's wholesome. Oh, it's the red blood again. The guy that we might have or not might have dogs last stream. <laughs> Turned out he was a very, very strong player. Very young, very strong. Ten different people. <laughs> I mean, his nickname was Blinking. Yeah, one of them. We didn't say which one of them, right? <laughs> the way he plays so quickly that gives me anxiety I don't know why wouldn't you use like those few additional seconds to think about the move unless you're a young kid and you're just boom, 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 which makes sense as well Mm, super defense. Trying to defend this square, yeah. Someone is breaking through. Surrounding the king, but not a checkmate right yet. Trying to take this knight for free while protecting this one. Have a silver drop king down. Oh. This is also checkmate right. We're going here and bishop drop. 
protecting that. Trying to go for this attack, simply speaking. Trying to escape. Dragon can come here and it looks like he's shooting me, but... Hard it. Hmm. The dragon looked like he shoot me, but... I don't know if it works the same guys for me if I see a win and they miss it I immediately lose my interest in the game <laughs> It's great in Shogi, it's cool to accept how to slam the pieces must be really fun for the kids and encourage them to stick for the game <laughs> You could say so Ah, uh, he got checkmate. Ah, uh, really good game from Dorayaki. <laughs> Red Blood says I lost completely. All right. I wonder which position they got the match. Really good attack from Dorayaki. They say it's a reversal. Yeah, it seems like red was much better, but a reversal happens. I think he played silver 3 4. Something. Three four. I oh, know three four was a bit shape, perhaps. Maybe two four. Yeah, pound drop is better. All right. So that's like the whole thing they talk about. Just, just the point. Right girl to 5-9 because I don't know, 10 second Shogi. <laughs> Minaru playing Dobutsu. Yeah, I don't know. Both, both seem like a possible ideas. All right, I'm gonna finish here. I'm gonna continue watching Meijin. If anything exciting, we're gonna discuss it in our pro world on Discord. I'm gonna see you on Saturday. Let me double check. Saturday evening when we're gonna cover that Meijin game. I'm pretty sure we wanna talk about this. Uh, and Sunday evening. Uh, those are Easter, yeah. This is Easter, so I don't know how you guys gonna be there, free or not. I plan on streaming, so... And the last stream is gonna be exactly next week. Um, the round 9 summary of TD series. So, thanks for joining. Fuji made a mistake. <gasps> Fuji made a mistake. Let me check quickly. <clears throat> What mistake did he make? He dropped the gold, which gives him advantage, then he took the gold, and how is that a mistake? Oh, you mean he had a better move? That's not a mistake! Shut up, yellow! <laughs> 
So he had more. That's not a mistake. That's a small thing. If he still have advantage, means it's a good play. Yep, psychologically. Psychologically doesn't work on Fuji. <laughs> anyway, let's keep getting excited about the game. See you next time.